All right, looks like we are live, and I want to welcome everybody to Standing for Truth. My name is Donnie, and I am your host and moderator for this afternoon's Great Dragons Debate. It is a privilege to have Taylor and Howard Stirrup here to debate this topic. Specifically, we are debating dinosaurs versus dragons, so a very cool topic for everybody this afternoon, and I'm excited. I'm pumped to see what these gentlemen are going to bring to the table for this debate. But before we do get into uh, opening statements, why don't we break the ice and get acquainted with our guests? Uh, we do have a new debater here, uh, Howard Stirrup. It's always great to have uh, new guests for the uh, Standing for Truth debate platform. So I know you've had debates in the past and so this isn't your first rodeo but it is your first time here and so i appreciate your time howard uh, so let's start with you how how you doing a little bit about yourself and also a little bit about your channel thank you um thanks for having me on danny and uh, thank you for being here taylor i uh, appreciate this opportunity it's my first time here on this channel so i do still have the stage fright I don't consider myself a debater. I really consider myself an activist. For the past six to seven years, I've been uh, raising awareness online and uh, especially face to face, giving out flyers and uh, making videos of the interactions and putting them onto my channel just to try and inspire that more people get into promoting natural sciences and um, testing things for themselves instead of just believing what the mainstream scientific narratives are. So yeah, I'll do my best. <laughs> I'm learning as I go along. So yeah, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, uh, Howard. Thank you for the intro. Uh, to the audience, if you like what you're hearing from uh, Howard here tonight, I do have his uh, YouTube channel linked in the description box. So make sure to check that out. Uh, Taylor, good to have you back as well. Definitely not your uh, first rodeo for this channel, nor for debates in general. And so, Taylor, how you been? A little bit about yourself and a little bit about your, your channels. Yeah, just, I mean, been a little busy over the past couple months, but getting back into the swing of things. And um, yeah, so I my channel does, uh, focuses a lot on skepticism, um, religious stuff, but also I'm moving towards, um, you know, attacking my own side, the atheists who uh, ha tend to have a lot of uh, socialism and moral relativism that I want to address as well. Um, and then I also um, co-host a channel called Debate Cafe um, and with my friend. She's a debate coach. And so we all, like we run it more of, as um, debate as a sport. And so we also give uh, whoever's doing the judging also gives feedback at the end um, and, and scores the debate. So that it's a little bit different in that way. And yeah. All right. Very cool, Taylor. It's great to have you uh, back here for this debate. So to those in the audience who like what they're hearing from Taylor from the Snake Was Right YouTube channel, I also have that uh, link, the relevant links in the description box for people to for people to see. Okay, well, before we get into opening statements, let me briefly cover the format for tonight. And so we're going to be having a comprehensive debate where the debaters are going to have more than enough time to engage the points and make a case for their position. So we're going to have uh, up to 20 minute opening statements. We're going to be starting with Taylor. Taylor is going to have a shorter opening and then uh, Howard's going to go through his presentation and then we're going to jump into some rebuttals. And the rebuttals are going to be eight minutes for each side to rebut each other. And then we're just going to uh, jump into a free-flowing discussion. And so rather than a real strict cross-exam, we're just going to go back and forth asking each other questions and addressing each other's points. Then we'll uh, wrap things up with a short three-minute closing statement. And then this is where we get you guys in the audience involved. We'll have a roughly 25-minute audience Q&A. And so if you do have a question pertaining to uh, tonight's debate topic. Again, dinosaurs versus dragons. Please do uh, tag me either at Donnie at Standing for Truth. Let me know who the question is for. We'll have some fun. Okay. So with that out of the way, Taylor, we are going to hand it over to you for tonight's first 
opening statement. And so whenever you're ready, the floor is all yours. Okay. And I'll try not to forget the mute button this time, as I always do. Um, let's see here. All right. So I think this is really going to hinge on definitions here. Um, so first off, what is a dinosaur? Uh, what we call a dinosaur is, um, well, typically the extinct um, lineages are called dinosaurs. Um, obviously, <laughs> the uh, mainstream science says that there are still living dinosaurs and birds, but here are the diagnostic traits of dinosaurs. Um, they are, they have the diagnostic traits of archosaurs, which are kind of um, a more basal, generic form of um, large reptile. Um, and we can go through some of those if you want, but generally think of things like crocodiles. Um, and, um, but in addition to that, dinosaurs are an offshoot of archosaurs in that, uh, I mean, whether you believe they're evolved or not, they are still can be categorized in this way. Um, they have reduced fourth and fifth digits on the hand. Foot has three main toes, three or more vertebrae in the sacrum, and an open hip socket joint. And these, there are others, there are lots of others, but these are some of the main ones that you can identify a fossil with. Um, and so to show you what I mean, uh, with one of them is they... Normally you have kind of a hot, like humans have like a hollow dish kind of shape in their uh, sacrum. And um, dinosaurs and birds have this hollow um, hole where instead of a dish where their, uh, the, the ball of their leg bone goes. So, I mean, birds have the same, the same anatomy, all the same diagnostic characteristics. Um, and these animals do exist and have been found in the thousands, um, ranging from fragments to almost complete articulations. Um, and as mentioned, birds are a living member of this group, um, even by creationist baromenology methods. And um, in normal English parlance, a dragon, on the other hand, is a fantastical creature, meaning, you know, magical. Um, and it has some, um, you know, kind of odd characteristics like they usually they have horns things like that typically with wings and fire breath and there are no known animals with this anatomy um pterosaurs are flying reptiles um they're extinct um, but they're also not dinosaurs and they don't have the diagnostic traits of dinosaurs nor do they have the skulls that are found in typical depictions of dragons i don't there are no known depictions of dragons that I know of um, that have things like pterosaur beaks. There are things like hippogriffs and like which are like um, an eagle's head and claws on a lion's body. Still no evidence of those things. In the east, dragons are more serpentine with horns and four legs. Still no specimens with this anatomy are known to exist. Um, but these uh, still have flight and magical powers, especially compared to uh, European dragons. There's no evidence for these creatures either. Um, nor is there evidence for dinosaurs living alongside humans. Um, so what exactly are we are Howard's claims here? Um, so I ask, what is a dragon? How do we tell if we find one? And what does he want to call the fossil animals that we pull out of the earth? Are these just dragons by another name? And in that case, what is the point of calling them dragons as opposed to the more scientific term of dinosaur, which actually has all of these identifiable traits um, associated with it and is accepted by you know, from the scientific community to basic English speakers as indicative of these fossils? So again, what, is, what would be the point of calling them dragons if that's the argument? Um, so I look forward to clarification, and that's that's my opening. Okay, Taylor, thank you very much for the opening statement. And we're now going to hand it over to Howard. Howard, whenever you're ready, you just let me know. I can get your uh, slides up as well. And you can take your 20-ish your minutes. Awesome. Let's see. 
Is is it already playing? Um. N uh, well, I do see the first picture. Awesome. Okay, I'll go. Okay. Cool. Okay. Go thank ahead. you. Is it full screen? Yes. Let me make it full screen right now for you, Howard. Oh, there we go. Looks good. Looks awesome. good. Awesome. Okay. So. Is it rational to identify these bone discoveries as dragons instead of dinosaurs? Well, I would obviously say yes. And it looks like some of the people that name the dinosaur uh, discoveries are also of the same opinion. Because we have Tit Titanosaurus, we have Draco Rex, and we have many other sleeping dragons uh, that have been found, and sea dragons that have even been found in the UK. So we can see that a lot of the discoveries are only partial. The majority of them are partial. Most of them are headless. So it's uh, quite easy to get a bit of imaginative and um, add a lot of things that we don't really know and make a lot of assumptions when the discoveries are partial. And we also have lots of historical evidence that there's been forgeries to promote these uh, narratives, may maybe for money, most oftenly. I know that the Bone Wars um, was how they originally started finding dinosaurs, and I think it was the 1850s or the 1860s, just 20 years after the name was discovered or designed. See, there's a lot of um, arguments about if they evolved into birds, rodents, or fish, and a lot of the discoveries seem to be in similar positions. The very first uh, known discovery was from Robert Plott, and he actually thought that he was finding petrified body parts. But because of people like Richard Owen that made the name dinosaurs, and the first fossils were known to be reburied before they were discovered again, it does seem like there could be some kind of cover up for maybe dragons and giants like the Bible talks about. Because when you look at the reproduction system, it doesn't quite make sense for the way that they were designed. And the only dinosaurs we've ever seen have been on a television screen. Yet we do have many historians throughout the recorded history. We've got people like Marco Polo and going back even thousands of years um, to stories like Beowulf and local um, town and city stories. So from Roman Empire to before even the Jesus Christ uh, timeline, we're going back to, I think it's 3000 BC was the first um, recorded dragon account. So as we can see, there's Epic of Gilgamesh, Beowulf, even to a few hundred years ago from Italian, Greek, even English um, historians, always talking about dragons, never talking about dinosaurs. As I said, it was only, I think, Sir Richard Owen, who was um, part of a society, I think it was the Royal Society, um, that he came up with the name, and since then they started finding the bones that could uh, support the narrative. Yet, strange enough, there's no depictions, there's no historical accounts from anybody in history before Richard Owen came up with the name dinosaurs. They were always considered to have been dragons, giants, and other beasts of uh, large proportions. You see, there's lots of uh, depictions of snakes, reptiles, lizards being from a higher dimension, like energy. In uh, Cambodia and places I've visited, people have told me that that's how they understand the snakes in all of their depictions. So what would a higher dimensional being look like? Well, we can only have um, mirrors and cartoons help us understand what a fourth dimensional cube, a tesseract, would look like. So what would a higher dimensional being look like? 
to us, we would only see th the 3D version, just like a 2D would only see a slice of a finger if we were to poke our finger into a 2D world. So it's understandable that there'd be misconceptions and that a lot of these um, depictions that are in stone and also scripture are probably just trying to explain something to us in a simple way for us to understand. So the Bible talks about Leviathan being a crooked serpent, a dragon that's in the sea. And he also does mention that um, fire might come out of the, the mouth. And it also mentions in scripture that uh, Satan or Saturn eats babies because it's um, eating the young to, to stop itself from reaching death. So we see this kind of uh, imagery in lots of multinational logos that are all connected to the United Nations, which is quite worrying because if there is um, hidden symbology in all of these big corporations that are supposed to be re representing us, if they have um, corporations and organizations that have hidden agendas, then it might be a concern worth investigating because it looks like we're not being told the truth about our history. We can see lots of evidence worldwide that, history, um, that ancient civilizations were quite advanced. Yet again, the United Nations are making sure that everybody sees otherwise. We don't just see dragons in stone and in history. We also see them on maps, maps from all over the world throughout history. So just like historians like to be taken seriously, map makers want to sell their maps. They don't want to lose business for putting something that isn't true. So when we see these depictions, they might be explaining that there are dragons, lizards, serpents in higher dimensions. And like the Bible says um, in the Lord's Prayer, um, on earth as in heaven, maybe it's saying that what happens in the stars and the heavens above will manifest and uh, happen in our reality at some point in time as well because there's lots of talk about the devil being a serpent there's lots of uh, talk about the devil being a sea dragon there's lots of talk about all of the fallen angels what we call planets having manifested in different parts of the world throughout time to given people false beliefs and have taken worship we even see in the book of Enoch that there's a, a lot of talk about how they um, changed their orbits and wanted to go their own way. So when we see similar depictions in South America and um, the Middle East, it's probably because the people really did see these things and that the heavens are infinite like pi, where the earth is solid, it's physical. So there's um, six different directions. If I'm keeping you guys up, we can go into detail afterwards. So understanding the heavens would also affect our worldview and our personal insight. So it's worrying that organizations like the Smithodian uh, Institute is hiding the evidence that things were larger in the past, even though we see it again in scripture, we see it in temple doors all over the world. We even see that in uh, nectar, there was a higher level of oxygen in the past, which goes with the biblical story that things were bigger, even things like trees. So obviously lizards would be bigger too, as well as people. Um, so would they be demigods? Would they be fallen angels? Would they be Nephilim? There's a whole debate there on its own. But we definitely see enough serious depictions and sculptures of giants and things built for giants and things that look like they were built by giants. So why would we be having this debate? Because I believe that dinosaurs are a fake narrative to hide giant, giants, dragons and our true history timeline and even our 
uh, to, to distort our worldview. So giant trees uh, seem to be everywhere. Uh, we now call them misas. They look like they've been chopped down. We get petrified wood. We get buildings that look like they've melted or been petrified. And we get large looking vegetable like stone formations, as well as scripture again telling us that there would be malting buildings burnt with burnt sulfur and um, rain. We also have um, the coastlines worldwide, as well as riverbeds that are two completely different environments, one with the river uh, water flowing one way and the coastline water flowing in multiple directions. Yet we see evidence of a worldwide flood worldwide, like I say, in the riverbeds and in the coastlines specifically, where you'd expect different uh, formations. We get two oval or shaped like a harp and the harp shaped stones always have the up to 20 correlations, features that correlate with the anatomy of a heart. So people are making their own observations. This is my friend Mike Wilkerson's collection. Uh, he has got the YouTube channel Stellium 7, and he can show the harp shape time and time again, always with uh, evidence of an aorta at the top, a, a twisted um, bottom, because when it contracts, it uh, kind of tightens like a rope. Uh, meteor colors when they get wet and also darker on the interior where they haven't had been so much uh, bleached by the sun. We wouldn't expect these uh, shapes to keep reappearing. Oval, yes, rounded, yes, but not the heart shape. So it's um, very interesting, and I recommend that everybody look get into it for themselves. Along riverbeds and uh, coastlines, and also in valleys, you'll find pebbles, smooth stones, that are either oval, rounded, or they're heart shaped. There's about 15 uh, to 20% average of the pebbles will be harp shaped. And the best explanation we've got is a worldwide flood. We have scientific experiments using microwaves, plasma, and uh, some powders, uh, chemical powders. We can actually reproduce the second hardest gem on the hardness scale, which is uh, rubies. So we can literally create rubies in a matter of, I think it's 20 seconds. So imagine a worldwide flood with uh, supernatural abilities. When God said, let there be light, imagine what he could say to get everything to petrify. When everything's already um, submerged in water that's conductive. So we can see on stones, iron ore which we find in blood. And we also find on mountaintops what looks like Trebekula Carne, if I'm saying that right. And we also find channels in stones that are going horizontally with the earth and iron ore still oozing out. And some of these stones, as you can see here, are much higher than the earth. So why earth would be oozing out of a broken part doesn't make sense unless earth as we know it is uh, walking on, uh, I think, what's the saying? Walking on titans or something. So we can look at a mountain where I live, which looks like an elephant overall. And we've, my friend Mike's counted up to 50 um, features that correlate with the anatomy of an elephant of such magnitude. We Here you can see myself going down what um, we believe to be um, a channel to the sinuses, which are situated behind what we believe to be the cave of the eye socket, where there's a remnant of an eyeball. You can see that the walls and the ceiling have not been um, smoothed with water erosion. The colouring and the textures uh, look quite biological, and there's also pillars and things that you'd expect in a sinus chamber if i'm saying that right so yes there's no sign of water erosion for these channels and these uh, chambers to have been form form formed yet there is um, lots of to scale to situation to shape to size 
orientation. Everything seems to be where it should be. So um, we're recommending that people start looking at things with new eyes because wind, water and mechanical erosion, random erosion, don't account for carvings that are all to, to place. And we even get uh, mainstream narratives acknowledging that there's a flood in to, that would explain lots of the um, fa things we find in geology. And um, what we're told are craters um, from being hit by a meteorite, they don't make sense because they're not showing skid lines. So there's lots of people that believe that our whole worldview has been distorted, our timeline has been distorted, and it all has to do with a spiritual war that the Bible and also um, other religious scriptures warn about that there are fallen angels that are being worshipped and they are what the Bible talks about as being the planets because they like to go at their own speed and their own pace and their own way. So we see people that have worshipped the sun throughout the history, people who worship the moon throughout history, as well as the other planets we were looking at. In the Quran, they talk about jinn being a higher dimensional uh, being not as high as alien and um, angels so you could say that these are fourth dimensional beings that maybe angels are fifth dimensional beings and that's why they say seven heavens seven like likewise for earths because earth can't be a 3d shape if we are ourselves uh, having thoughts feelings memories that are not physical so if earth's a higher dimensional shape then there would be higher dimensional beings which means that there would be a creator because if there is uh, higher dimensional beings that are deceiving us to think otherwise, then there's a clear sign of evil. And if there's a sign of evil, then there must be a sign of good. Good is creative. So that tells me there's a creator. And the devil's greatest trick is to make everyone think he doesn't believe. So we've literally been brainwashed to ignore all of the, the historical artifacts showing that there's reptilian creatures in either a higher dimension and possibly manifested in our physical realm at some point as well. Uh, there's stories like of the Loch Ness, there's statues worldwide over temples that we still don't understand how they built and pyramids that show there's some kind of connection with energy. And also there's something to do with maintaining youth by eating babies, which is why we get the vampire, even depictions from Pope Gregory um, and Alistair Crowley, the most famous Satanist, all, um, as well as cars, uh, brands like Alfa Romero, show there's something about eating uh, young flesh and stealing innocence. It's uh, interesting that even the Vatican are secretly um, idolizing uh, the reptile, just like the United Nations have got symbolic uh, subliminal messages in their artwork in uh, one of their biggest conference rooms, showing the snake on the head, like in the Jungle Book, everyone's hypnotized, like by, by the third eye. And there's many um, Bible verses that also suggest that there is a serpent seed, um, a generation of vipers, which uh, we, we've been brainwashed and primed to laugh about, to even like the idea that um, vampires could uh, depend on our innocence and youth to stay alive. So um, we ignore all of the evidence, even though there was a secret society known as the Order of Dragon, which Napoleon and Count Dracula was a member of. Count Dracula being um, funny that the royal family admit their descendants. The genealogy shows that I'm descended from Vlad the Impaler, you see. So yeah, we can just ignore the logos on their um, chairs, on their emblems. We can ignore all the detailed artwork that goes into all of the biblical details being represented. And we can ignore that their um, family is totally connected to secret societies that I used to be a member of that go back to very, very long time ago. And in the highest degrees, they admit that Lucifer is their God. Lucifer is the light bearer, the light that they are hoping to acquire. And we also see what we call the world leaders go into ceremonies like the CERN 
uh, tunnel opening and also we see in Hollywood and the music industry that there's so much idolizing of these biblical um, figures that were taught are just myth and we shouldn't believe. But if there's so much money behind um, the promotion of these subliminals, I don't think that the people telling us that we shouldn't be taking these things seriously, but at the same time spending so much time and energy to make sure that we see the alternative and actually subliminally worship and idolize people that promote these things. It just tells me that there's definitely a agenda for a one world government and that we're being, um, we're giving, we're, we've got plenty of evidence right in front of us. So if people want to take screenshots, we can come back to this openly in the open discussion. There's plenty of uh, means, methods, opportunity. So thanks for listening. Let's see if we can get into it. Howard, thank you very much for that 20 minute opening statement. Gentlemen, that concludes the opening statements for tonight's Dragons Debate Showdown. I do appreciate the visuals and it looks like we have uh, a lot of arguments and points to uh, engage for the rest of the debate. So appreciate it again, Taylor. Howard, we're now moving into the uninterrupted rebuttal portion of tonight's debate. And so Taylor, whenever you're ready, you have eight minutes on the clock to rebut Howard. Go ahead. Okay, so it's still really unclear what the actual argument is. Um, is it that dragons, such as are depicting in, in Beowulf, are actually real? Or are all dinosaurs like fantastical magic monsters? Um, or is it just that the, dino the regular dinosaurs that we know of are should be called dragons? It's very unclear what, which one of those, if not all of them, you're advocating for um and we had this uh conspiracy theory about how it's a fit how dinosaurs are a fake narrative to hide giants um so uh, what is fake first of all what is fake about the narrative are are they hiding the wings on these things or what's going on are they totally fake i it's really unclear what you're actually saying um, and how would that hide giants if if they're hiding the giant bones then why did like why do they need to call dinosaurs dinosaurs um if we just called them dragons um what would that change if we started calling them dragons we still wouldn't accept that beowulf was a real person who fought a real dra fire breathing dragon um, we still wouldn't accept leviathan or fire breathing dragons uh, at all as what we'd now be calling dragons that actually existed we'd, we'd still have t-rex and call that a dragon but we wouldn't have smaug and call that a dragon um well, we would still call it a dragon, but we'd call it a fictional dragon, just like there are fictional dinosaurs, like in Jurassic Park. They have made up dinosaurs in there, and a lot of the depictions are inaccurate as well. So really unclear. It just seems to be muddling the waters um, between these, these um, mythological beings, which I would say are fictional, and beings that can actually be confirmed with uh, solid fossil evidence we i think we should have different terms for them that's why we have a term dinosaur and a term dragon if we call them all dragons what would what is that helping we still wouldn't accept giants without the physical evidence and if your claim is that they're hiding the physical evidence of giants that's a completely different argument that's making a claim that there's a cover-up of the fossil evidence so we need evidence of that cover-up not just conjecture Conjecture is not really evidence at all. Um, and things like if, if, if we're trying to hide, dra if the royal family is trying to hide dragons from people, why would they put dragons on their coat of arms? It seems like they were just trying to erase all mentions of them to not even put that idea in people's heads. Um, and so it's just really odd. And I'd like to ask what mythological creatures do you accept and which ones don't you accept? Do you accept all mythological creatures um and you mentioned maps that depict sea monsters they they also thought manatees were mermaids um 
later we found out that they're just manatees and there are no women with seashell bras and fishtails swimming around trying to seduce sailors. Um, and a lot of your speculation is just based on mythology and written uh, like scriptures and things like that. There are other Middle Eastern myths that describe the same sea dragon as uh, Leviathan. It's just a dragon of chaos from older myths. Um, and they report that their gods slew Leviathan. So is that evidence for their gods and their dragons of chaos? Or are you just giving special treatment to certain scriptures and certain myths and not others? Or do you try to accept all of them? Regardless, scripture isn't evidence of anything um, unless you take all the scriptures, and in which case they're all mutually contradictory. So they're not very reliable. Um, to address your some of the dra the um, dinosaurs that were kind of named after dragons, like D Draco Rex, yeah, it had some horns that kind of makes it look like a dragon. Still no wings or anything. No evidence that it can breathe fire. Just another dinosaur with a colorful name. Scientists do that all the time. They they called um, a a little organism that lives in the water that has it's it's not a mushroom. It's it's a, an animal, but it kind of looks like a mushroom it's called a hydra and it has these little kind of things that it's kind of it's almost like a reverse jellyfish that's stuck to the bottom it's like a, it's almost um like coral but they call that a hydra referencing the greek mythological being that's a hydra that if you cut off its head it'll grow more because that's what it, it if you cut off parts of its little tendrils it'll grow more so does that mean hydras from greek mythology actually exist um so, again, what is the point of calling them dragons? It just confuses these things. Um, and addressing your cave sinus chamber um, and your other um, geological um, formations, there, that's not evidence of any kind of... Can you tell them to hold on for one minute? Um, hold on. Someone's calling me real quick. Sorry. No worries, Taylor. I'll stop the timer. And once Taylor is ready to go, we will uh, get this going again. And in the meantime, I will uh, give a quick shout out. So for the summer, we've been doing roughly, so for June, we had about five events a week. So we want to make it the summer of all debates, but also open mics too. We want to give people the opportunity to get involved and to join our shows and engage in some impromptu discussion and debate. So this week we have two open mics. So we have another evolution open mic. Um, we've been doing the evolution open mics about once a month and they've been a lot of fun. I really enjoy these. Shows me how quickly time flies by because I feel like we just had this open mic with Dr. Dino uh, about a month ago. This one we went for about four hours, lots of fun. Matt, myself, Sam, Kent, uh, we had a lot of engagement, a lot of great people joined. And so our next open mic is this Thursday with uh, Kent. This time it'll be uh, Kent, myself, and Sam. And so if you want to join and engage the topic of evolution, what is the best evidence for evolution, please, uh, please make sure to set some time aside and we'll have some fun. Then the very next day, we've got another open mic. This time it'll be with Matt Yester. And the topic will be the Transcendental Trinity. And it'll be me and Sam as hosts, Matt Yester as guest. And so I'm looking forward to this one. Anybody interested in this topic, make sure to uh, be there this Friday. So back to back, open mic showdowns. And with that, looks like Taylor is back. And so Taylor, whenever you're ready to go. Yeah, my so sorry, guys. My, my oh, lady no was trying to restart my, our, my internet in the middle of this. Um, <laughs> no just told her to turn the Wi-Fi off. <laughs> um, where was I? Um, I think I've got, what, a minute or so left? Yeah, well, you just hit the five minute and 45 second mark. I hit pause during that time. So you got uh, just over two minutes. Okay. Um, so... I think I was talking about the uh, geological features just because there's a ridge that kind of looks like a back doesn't mean it's a back of like a, like a sp spinosaurus or something. 
Um, there are all kinds of shapes. Uh, the, the cave that you mentioned, I, I don't know why you think it looks like a sinus because sinuses are actually very smooth. I don't know if you've seen video of endoscopies of any of the holes that they stick those things into. Uh, it's very smooth tissue in there. Um, and the and the roughness of the cave, I'm not sure if you know what stalagmites and stalactites are. That's that is water erosion. Um, the the water erodes other minerals and deposits minerals as it drips from the top of caves, both on the roof and where they drip down. That's a very it's like the most well known geological process that that I'm aware of. <laughs> um, so. And there's there's no bones in these these features. It's just caves that you think kind of look like nasal passages. I don't know um, if if they were actually giant enormous beings, we should be able to find um, bone shaped uh, parts of these mountains that are of a different type of rock or a different density of rock. That should be pretty easy to find, unless again that's being covered up for some reason, even though you. It's not you, you don't have any evidence of that cover up and it's not possible to cover that up because people can just go do this without permission. You can go. You can start a company, you can buy your own equipment. Um, and so then we started talking about four dimensional beings and subliminal messages. Uh, again, just speculation. I, I'm 20 not, seconds. Subliminal messages must not work very well because I've never had this hidden satanic urge during a Lady Gaga concert. Um, it's, it's just pure speculation, um, and which is not evidence, compared, especially compared to the hard physical evidence that we have for just mundane large lizards that are dinosaurs. All right, Taylor, that is eight minutes. Thank you very much. For that eight-minute rebuttal, we're now going to hand it to Howard. Howard, stir up whenever you're ready. Let me restart the timer. You also have eight minutes for a rebuttal, and the floor is yours. Go ahead. Thank you. So Taylor was making his definition um, to what it what makes a dinosaur a dinosaur, and says that that the like crocodiles. They also believe that they've evolved into chickens and that they've got hips similar to birds, but they're like crocodiles. So I'm just wondering if, if he's willing to admit that they could have found bone structures from bird-like creatures and bone structures from reptilian-like creatures, and they're just classing those different stages of evolution when really it could be just completely different creatures. And um, I don't see what the problem with fire breathing um, is because we're talking about creatures that are no longer around anymore. So just like there's blue-blooded creatures, maybe there's creatures that could uh, breathe fire. Maybe they had a different chemical than we do for our saliva. And maybe because the oxygen content was much higher before, so obviously this is just me making assumptions, but I don't see how it can be considered so out there, so far-fetched when we know the oxygen content was higher and we're talking about creatures that are no longer with us anymore, at least in the physical realm. So yeah, your definition to me just doesn't really do much apart from show that you guys are trying to tie in a lot of uh, just bone discoveries and call them all dinosaurs. And what would it matter if they were called dragons? Well, that's my point. The whole idea of things being as they appear in uh, sculptures, in uh, scriptures, and um, in the myths that we still can learn from local towns and historians, it seems more likely that it's only because of a financial incentive since uh, Robert Owen uh, created the term that all of these bone discoveries were made. Uh, that's very suspicious. So I, I think you can follow the money. There's a lot of evidence that museums make a lot of money from these 
bone discoveries. And there's also lots of evidence, as I showed in my opening statements, where the Smith Smithsonian Institute has been caught uh, with forgeries. They've been taken to court for destroying uh, discoveries that went against their narratives. So there's court cases and um, f known forgeries from the Smithsonian Institute. So there's definitely evidence of a conspiracy. Um, you admitted that there's uh, horns on the Dra Draco X, Draco Rex. So it's possible that horns on other discoveries were removed, just like uh, I showed the very first uh, bone discovery was reburied before it was rediscovered, which suggests that there was uh, people needed to confirm or modify things before they went public. So just like you say, there's no evidence of uh, wings. Wings and horns could be removed by the people that are authoritative figures in these um, kind of discoveries, which is just like we can't see any real dinosaur bones when we go to a museum. We only see the uh, reconstructions. Only the certain people that work for the museum get to see the real bones. So it's very difficult for us to know what we're talking about when we can't verify these things for ourselves. Um, so dinosaurs also go under the definition of when they existed. And this is all promoting the narrative that Earth was around billions of years ago and that everything's evolved and that there's been um, an extinction due to asteroids and uh, meteorites and stuff. Yet we do have evidence to say the contrary that there's been a worldwide flood in the last few thousand years and uh, the evidence for that is reproducible. We don't need to trust in any museum um, authorities or we have our own independent investigation and everyone can take part in it and the evidence is literally everywhere. Um, just to touch on what you said in your rebuttal quickly, Yes, I'm aware of the water formations that become stone from dripping down. They were not what I was showing in my video. What I showed in my video were clear pillars that were the same width at the bottom as they were at the top. Um, they had a biological um, formation to them. And I was saying that the walls and the ceiling and the floor were not smoothed from water erosion as we're taught to believe we can see more of a bubbly kind of texture as we see in flesh, as I had um, palps removed from my sinus chamber. So yeah, I know um, that it's smooth, but it's not smooth from water flow. Um, it's smooth from being biologically designed to have certain functions. I think that's all the notes I took. Um, so let's just check. Yeah, I think that's that's time. Okay, Howard, thank you very much for that eight minute rebuttal. And gentlemen, great job so far. That concludes the uh, roughly 20 minute openings, eight minute rebuttals. We're now moving into an open discussion. And so now is the opportunity to take each of, of the relevant points, the most important points, and go back and forth on them, engaging them. Uh, before I do hand it to uh, Howard and Taylor, I do want to remind the audience we are doing an audience Q&A. And so please, if you do have a question for Howard or Taylor, again, Tonight's debate is dinosaurs versus dragons. Make sure to tag me and we'll have some fun for the Q&A. Okay, Howard just ended with his eight minute rebuttal and therefore Taylor, let's hand it to you to pick the first topic that uh, you'd like to discuss for uh, tonight's debate. Gentlemen, go ahead. So um, do you believe that all mythological fantastical creatures found in stories are real? Not all, because obviously some authors 
will have vivid imaginations and some mm -hmm. will just be right out liars but i find it um very persuasive that so many stories from so many different parts of the world um have got so many similarities so i, I do believe that the majority of the stories especially when from different parts of the world that correlate um I, I do believe that most of them are true and that there is a conspiracy from a higher dimension, be it the devil or be it uh, the fallen angels that are very cunningly uh, wiping away all the evidence of this um, spiritual reality so that we are more so, likely to sin. So before we get to the conspiracy, what, how do you tell the difference between a fake mythological monster and a real cryptid, which is that that being animals that we have no physical evidence, for, physical specimens of, but that you think are actually out there or existed at some point? How do you well, tell the difference between that and just made up monsters? As I said in the opening, if people have spent a lot of time and money to design maps and then try to sell them, they're not going to endanger their business by putting stuff on there that could belittle their um, discredit their their whole map. They they want their map huh? to be taken seriously, so they're not going to be putting things on a map that you wouldn't find in them places. So there's that part that people that make maps are doing it as a serious business. Then there's what, what does that, that have to do with how you can tell the difference between a uh a fictional monster and a real monster that actually existed at some point. I'm um, getting there. I'm saying if there's accumulation of different sources, one being maps, another being historians and historical accounts from cities and towns and countries all over the world, historians that wanted to be taken seriously, historians that wanted to get employed, they didn't want to be known for telling jokes or for saying myths that aren't true. They wanted to be known for being factual. So they were also in a business. And then we've got sculptors, people that were able to sculpt uh, amazing statues outside of pyramids and temples that we still don't understand how they were built. So we still Sphinx, don't have some of these technologies even today, yet we're laughing thing? at people is the Sphinx yeah. a real creature, like a human's head on a lion's body? Well, there's lots of evidence of, uh, I think it's called Crimera, uh, where the ancients, yeah, you know about this, yeah, where they like to experiment, genetically modify organisms, kind of like what they've just done with the spike protein. They're obsessed with uh, trying to improve on God's creation. So people like to play God and mix uh, animals. So ancient people were genetically splicing these things? Well, there's evidence all over the world. I've been to a temple what in Cambodia the where they had monkeys' heads and um, birds. In art, right? Statues. Yeah, art. They were... So how every... do you tell the difference between art and a depiction of a real monster? When you see the similarities in different temples in the same country and then in different countries, you see that these people that sculpted these statues wanted the statues and the temples to be taken seriously, like the map people designers. People want all kinds of things to be taken seriously. Yeah, unless the, the, they're the selling, Mabry unless it's Disney. Disney wants you to be excited at the idea that it's all uh, fantasy. But when you people are selling statues, mermaids? maps, and historical accounts, they want to be taken seriously, don't they? Yeah, but they could get it wrong, or they could just be reporting other myths that they heard from someone else. So how do we tell the difference? How would you like, hear would you about a, a bird-headed myth? How would you hear about a fallen angel with a bird head and wings like someone I showed? Someone else might have told you. Myths develop over time. It's like a game of telephone. There are historical records. And a lot of ancient school. people were Let me know on hallucinogens. Right, and I'll they, just. And they didn't know that they didn't know what biochemistry is. So they would eat a plant. They would think it's magical, and that their hallucinations were actually them 
physically going to another realm. They had no concept of a, a chemical getting into your brain and hallucinating. Think about so, what you're saying. They can't physically go to another dimension, metaphysically, spiritually, psychology. Yeah, that's what people claim. So you think the hallucinations are real? Is it, what, well, don't, for, what don't you think is real? Well, in story let's talk time. about, let's talk, yeah? When a psych psychiatrist or a psychologist that works in an asylum that's been working there for 20, 30 years starts doing interviews and explaining that he keeps having the same conversation with people and that maybe they're hearing voices that are actually there in a higher dimension yeah i believe that these people have got something in common I, i'm into pattern recognition i don't like ignoring things because i've been told that it's mythological or told that it's not true and that's what i should believe i like to follow the evidence and i see more evidence that uh, psychiatrists when that or psychologists when they're talking to people that hear voices that these voices are real they're just not voices that we are tuned into hearing and that they're possessed with these energies or spirits i believe that these mythological creatures that we see very detailed sculptures of are part of our history and if not physically at least metaphysically because you mentioned this hydra where they can cut off the head and no heads grow back we have trouble at understanding where physical matter could just keep coming from but no we don't the same uh, yeah i know with your big bang you can believe that something came out of nothing but to not get no, into that my point is new, my, my point is that in a higher right. dimension like we can see the cube a tesseract we can imagine it's constantly moving or it's in many places at once because of the mirror version of the tesseract that we looked into in my video this helps us understand that higher dimensional beings would have higher powers than we would they could be in more places than one they could travel faster than what we consider the speed of light so yes i believe that if you were fighting a metaphysical creature you cut off its head and more could grow back I, that makes sense in a higher dimension maybe in our physical realm it's a conundrum but we're talking okay. about things that might be metaphysical okay so that's all conjecture you just believe it and you but there's no way to test it we can well, actually test the effects of hallucinogens we can yes we can study thank you for being the, honest huh we thank can you study for your honesty actual um the the active chemical in a hallucinogen and we can study we can look at what receptors in the brain that it accepts what chemicals is it close to uh, we can even tag them with fluorescence and things like that uh, to, to see what parts of the brain they go to and test scientifically if we put this chemical in a brain, this part of the brain lights up, et cetera, et cetera. You can't test whether that's actually tuning into some frequency of spirits that's out there. So that's just pure conjecture on your part. I disagree because there's a massive accumulation of people saying the same thing from different parts of the world. That, if I may just finish what I'm saying, there's people from different parts of the world seeing the same entities, just like this psychiatrists having conversations with people in different languages in different parts of the world that are having the same conversations, voices telling them to kill themselves, hurt themselves and all these kind of things. So There's you no other can cause? believe it's conjecture. You can call it conjecture, but I'm looking at actual evidence from testimonies all over the world to date. I'm also looking at sculptures from different parts of the world, like I showed in my open presentation, that mm -hmm. clearly show bird-headed creatures with wings giving, a, I think it's an acorn or something, uh, as a gift. Yeah, like the third eye uh, kind of information that some people are looking into. So you can assume that it's conjecture, but we actually have historical statues of the same entity coming down in different parts of the world at different times in history that have had no supposed communication, yet they've depicted the same bird-faced creature with this knowledge as a fallen angel. But that's conjecture. It doesn't matter that there's evidence in stone in two completely different parts of the world for that one example doesn't matter that there's maps that people want to be taken seriously from different parts of the world from different times in history that are also showing the same things 
in the specific places. It doesn't matter that it's written in scripture that's possibly inspired by God. To you, this is all conjecture. But I'm looking at it as a lot of evidence. And if you join all the dots, you've got a pretty solid case that the only reason we're told not to believe it is because the people that okay. don't want us to believe it are working for the devil. Uh -huh. So it seems mm -hmm. like your skepticism only goes one way. Whereas, um, you know, I can sit here and just say we have actual evidence over and over and over, but that's not actual evidence. All you're saying is you have evidence, but you haven't given any evidence. Um, you just so it's not very hard for people to imagine a human, but with a bird head or a human, but with a crocodile head, a human, but with a bull's head. It's, it's not a stretch of imagination. It's not hard also for them to imagine lizards, but bigger or things like that. Um, and also there, you say there are the similar entities depicted all over the world. Well, there's also different entities. Does every civilization have uh, centaurs? Does every civilization have minotaurs? Um, does, do they all have, uh, vampires are pretty well spread, but they all think they're different. Even dragons, every part of the world has a different dragon myth. Uh, and different dragon depictions. The Middle East thinks that they're chaos entities. The China, the uh, Eastern Asians think that they're holy entities that help people, and they have no wings. Um, and the, the Middle Eastern people think that they're associated with the waters. The European peoples think that they're flying. Uh, they have wings and breathe um, fire. What if, they were, what if they were all right? What if, like, we get different duck types what of if? dogs? What, what if, if yeah. oh, that's all you got? You you said maybe No, I've I've maybe literally can, got evidence uh, all over the world. I've got evidence all you over keep the world. Saying but, that. But, you keep no, saying I'm, that. You I said, showed it in my opening on. statements that there is evidence in writing, in that's sculpture. Not evidence. That's How not evidence. Not you have evidence. not given a single way to tell the difference between that and fiction. So that's why it's not evidence. Um you're just you're just playing favorites with the ones that you do like and saying that that's evidence just because no, someone wrote a story got, about it we've doesn't both, mean we've, that it's we've real. We've both got you bone said, discoveries. We've got one thing in common, bone discoveries. Yeah. That's and all so you've got. That's all, all the, you've right. got. That's the only Indeed. evidence that you've got. I've uh -huh. got evidence that goes the with the bone goes, discoveries. You have no evidence beyond the bone discoveries. All you have, you said, Maybe there's creatures that could breathe fire. Maybe they have different saliva. You even said that that's you just making assumptions, right? Yes. There's no to go evidence with to it. go with the just evidence because, that is in stone that is in scripture. I'm not done talking. Just because I let you talk for minutes and minutes at a time, dude. So because there's uh, so just because something is a maybe or a possibility, there maybe there's a sleeping grizzly bear behind me right now. Does that mean that there is? Do you have any evidence? No. Well, then why would you say such an absurd thing? You have I no have evidence, evidence that any creatures could breathe fire. You just have stories about fire-breathing creatures, we which have, is not evidence of anything because we you have admitted chemicals that, you, that can, are flammable. you can make. You ha admitted that there are stories that aren't true about monsters. So give me a way to tell the difference. So far, the only thing you said Have you is ever lit a fart, Tyler? Seriously. Have you ever lit a fart? No. Well, you should try living I a little bit. The, I watched the South Park movie. I, I Right. Well, this is the difference like between me and you. You watch other you, people you and like believe your what you're told. Let me know when I can speak, yeah? <laughs> yeah? So, you like to watch other people and believe what other people say. I like to test things for myself. So, How yeah, have you tested if a, this? If a How fart, have you tested whether dragons exist if I and put can a, breathe fire? If I put a flame next to my arse and fart... Guess what? The f it becomes flammable. So what's so amazing so to think that a dragons, dragon could breathe fire? Because when we, okay, we can where expel is... methane gas, which is flammable. So what's so far-fetched about a dragon breathing fire? If we can breathe fire out of our mm -hmm. arse, why can't a dragon breathe fire out of its mouth? Because uh, we're not fire. Yeah, guys, guys, I'm just going to um, jump in. Let's get back on track. Let's keep it uh, you know, rated G for the young Christians in the audience. Um <laughs> Okay, so well, we I have a little I've... bit of crosstalk. Let's get right back to the subject, dinosaurs versus dragons. Few people in the audience confuse what the proposition is. So I'd like to uh, hand it back to, to Howard to maybe uh, provide a positive argument for tonight and then 
uh, not that you haven't, but let's kind of get back on track, pick a, a certain point brought up in the opening statement and let's allow you guys to go back and forth on well, it. I would like to respond sure. to ahead, that. Taylor. Yeah. Um, first of all, there's no evidence of a lighter in dinosaurs mouths. And we know that methane is produced as a result of digestion and is not expelled through the mouth. So that's why. So it's in just humans. you have pure conjecture in all animals. All animals that, that expel methane like that. I've just given an example of how we can expel fire. So there is scientific evidence that we can no, expel fire. No, you haven't. You fire. need a lighter to do that. You need You can make a spark. a spark. You can make a spark with teeth or whatever. Okay, you, there's many... Show me evidence of that. I've you shown just, you... This I've is told just your you imagination. Evidence of, no, I've told you evidence of how you can light a fart. And I've also... Oh, okay. <laughs> With a lighter. Yeah. Out of the wrong and end I've also, of the digestive tract. So it's the opposite of what you think. What we have for You're saliva so is acidic. So what they had for saliva might have also been flammable. I can't tell acid you the is, definite. Acid does not mean flammable. My point is that there's scientific evidence to support these theories, these stories, these things that have been depicted in stone that you say aren't evidence. What is it? What is it? Beyond your beyond maybe they have this type of anatomy that we haven't discovered. Well, apart from maybe, what have you got to support that the bone discoveries are dinosaurs? Apart from a funded industry that's also been caught out for forgeries, it's also been caught out for cover ups. Yeah, but you want to ignore that. the cover ups, you want to ignore the evidence of cover-ups you want to ignore the evidence really? of forgeries and you really? just want to claim that i don't have any evidence yeah i've literally shown loads of evidence that there is a conspiracy going on to hide our history to hide to distort our worldview to cause us to sin and be promote atheism and things because we're blind to all of the evidence that's right in front of us and your name says a lot you like to use the name that the snake is right. So that uh -huh. shows that you have an ideology. That shows that you favor, you idolize this snake feature. I'm not sure what, how you believe it, if it was a physical entity, a metaphysical, or if it's something that we've just invented. But whatever it means to you, it obviously means a lot to you, just like the United Nations and just like the Vatican. It means a lot to them to put it in their buildings Mm -hmm. And then it's the logos. So I I, I yeah. uh, believe there's power in narrative and story, um, and so I that's part of uh, the channel. Um, stories contain knowledge. I believe that knowledge of good and evil is a good thing. That's about as deep as it goes. Um, so you and so you deny that there are secret societies that take no, it further, we're going like back the to Count that, Dracula. Because you just pile on a ton of stuff at a time. Um, so going back to the forgeries, um, do you know who exposed the forgeries? It, it was paleontologists who, who exposed people who weren't paleontologists trying to make forgeries. And the paleontologists said, no, these are anatomy from different uh, animals that you're just splicing together. And this it was one highly time publicized. In so this, this again, one the time scientific in bank community camp. is not involved in the cover-up. It is actually involved in the ex exposition of these forgeries, and it's highly publicized. So what's the conspiracy? You're talking about this one time in bank camp. I'm talking about multiple times that they've been caught for forgeries. Oh, Imagine yeah. Imagine how many that, forgeries part... haven't been caught yet. Sorry, were you the trying other... to say something, Taylor? The other part is you haven't given any evidence of this. You've just kind of vaguely referenced well-known um, things. So what what forgeries are you talking about? Well, you've just contradicted yourself. So I did reference or I didn't reference? I did I reference I said you vaguely few, referenced I? the a idea few. that there are fossil forgeries. You didn't, you didn't no, have I, ex I, I, any literally, I literally showed a few examples and mm -hmm. I showed newspaper cutouts where the Smithsonian Institute's been caught for forgeries. So I showed quite a few examples and, they and were I could exposed. dig up more. And imagine By how many haven't been scientists. exposed. 
They weren't exposed yes. by YouTubers. They were exposed by other scientists. Yes, guess what? There's different scientists with different conclusions. I'm not saying that all scientists are in a conspiracy. I'm saying that the people that run the peer-reviewed system, the people that the people that run the organizations for the uh, security worldwide, for the Antarctic Treaty, for the historical uh, narratives of the world, and the climate change narratives, and also the health uh, organization, they're all connected to the United Nations. So if anyone had the power, the motive, it would be them. Them that have got the what? snake on their logo, same as you've got it on yours. Uh huh. The snake was right to question God and to get the knowledge of good and evil. That's a good thing. But you don't believe in God, yet at the same uh -huh. time you idolize the story. Yep. So, so this is stories my are point. great. If people that idolize stories that go against the truth get into powerful positions and start making everyone else believe in things that aren't true because they're purposely lying, hiding evidence removing horns removing wings you destroying have no evidence skulls we've no got evidence. evident we've got evidence that most of the bone discoveries haven't got heads not most uh, yeah and, uh, just 70 percent part of it wasn't discovered doesn't mean might that be it because was they taken. didn't want you to recognize the features so they could call it something else it doesn't it might have been do you yeah, have evidence it that it was no. I've shown evidence that it might have been, yeah. And I've shown motive, I've shown means, it, and I've uh, shown lots of different evidences from different show, parts of the world through memes? different times. Memes. Memes. That, you can use evidence. that term if you want to. I would call it depictions to help get a point across. Uh -huh. So depictions of monsters is evidence. We I've still have no idea how to... How to differentiate I've shown depictions. A I've shown real and sculptures. A monster. I've shown real sculptures made by real people. I've shown scripture. How do you know that that's a real maps depiction? That also match other depictions that other people. I'm showing depictions that match other depictions from other parts of the world. You you just want to pretend that's coincidence again. It's, it's not evidence, it's, it's a coincidence. Not much of a uh, resemblance. I disagree. Of a large I showed reptile. A lot. That's I showed many not statues. a very specific resemblance. I showed many statues and I've been to many temples that show the same kind mm -hmm. of entities in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not similar enough. In your opinion? No, because it, when actual paleontology, we have very specific anatomy of bones they they measure it down to the precise angle for species you just have these artworks so if these artworks and were actually same bone discoveries the same bone, bone discoveries across, we, we we both have bone discoveries you believe they're dinosaurs for millions and millions of years ago i believe that they're not dinosaurs they're a mixture of reptiles and large beasts and even giants that Why? are being called dinosaurs because they don't want us to believe in the flood they don't want us to believe that the earth is more than a 3d shape they don't want us to believe that the creator is close watching and cares for us they want Why us to believe, believe that? that we are gods so that What's we don't the worship the creator well What's the evidence, evidence is for in any the, of that conspiracy it's in the, the bible wings it's in the that's bible it's in the Quran. that's not evidence it's historical evidence. It's written it's not in historical text. evidence. It's, it's written in multiple languages, and it's been around so for thousands of years. So what? Whether it's true or not is a different story, but it's literally written uh, in text written. in multiple languages. It is that's, evidence. That's not evidence. Whether you think it's, it's strong evidence, it's it's a real piece of paper that's got something on it that's been okay. translated into different languages that says what I'm saying. We see in all of these sculptures and these maps and all these myths. There are so real matches. pieces of paper that say that your so God exists and other gods do exist. So they are evidence. How strong they are is another story, but they are pieces of evidence. You can't if just I say they're not If I granted it's evidence. evidence, it is the weakest possible evidence that, is, that there is. 
not when but I wouldn't call it evidence because a but, story is not evidence. A st- evidence has to distinguish and differentiate. There's so many again, things you have in to the be Bible. able to tell the difference between a story and a real event. Once you do that, then you might have evidence. Well, well there's evidence of a worldwide flood that the Bible talks about. Whether you no, acknowledge not. it or not. Yes, there is. It's no, full pebbles. In fact, there's evidence stones. that there wasn't a worldwide flood. You could ignore the open source investigation like many atheists do, or you could get involved and see if you find other uh, morph- morphologies. We only find oval, rounded, or heart-shaped, because most organs are oval, rounded. Are you saying heart where, with a P or a heart with a T? Both. Hearts are shaped like the heart. So harp-shaped stones are easy to find. They're either harp-shaped or rounded, just like organs are either rounded or they're the heart. So it's interesting that they're the only two shapes that you find in riverbeds. It's not actually. And Do you know what kind of shapes come out of rock tumblers? Different shapes, shapes, mostly oval. Yes, but we don't find different shapes, Taylor. If you listen instead of laughing, listen. You don't find different shapes. You only find two, mostly oval or harp shaped. Because because most of the organs. Just like how gravity shapes planets necessarily in the shape of a ball. um, When rocks have forces interacting on them from all sides because they're tumbling, it creates spheres and ovals because they're getting roughly equal force on all sides which is what an oval or a circle is or yeah mechanical erosion i've been looking into it for years thank you um i know all about mechanical erosion that's why i clearly said there's two shapes oval which we could expect and the other shape is harp shaped stones harp shaped stones shouldn't be made from water passing over it in one direction, a river. But we do. We find a flat top with a little indentation where the aorta was. We see a twisted bottom. We see it tapering on one side more and straight on the other. We see a single faceted uh, back, which is either flat or concave. And we see a multifaceted front. These are just a few of the uh, features that you'll find in heart shaped stones if you're interested there's a video on my channel and there's more in-depth videos on stallium 7 and you can so, get involved in the open source investigation and then you can have counter evidence from your own personal experience rather than just telling me what you believe that someone else has told you you're just telling me what you believe what from what someone else told you literally you're saying someone wrote it down so i believe it someone carved a statue so i believe it no i'm um, telling you evidence that i found for myself i found pebbles on the beach and in the riverbed i'm still talking but you made a claim um, so i wanted so, to answer it so meanwhile i have personal experience that there are more than two shapes of rocks found in rivers and uh the ones that are kind of like what you're calling a harp shape um that it's not shaped like a heart actually are you looking at real stones or photos of other people's stones i you're played lo- in you're rivers on, and you're I on google rivers. you're on google looking no, at images of i have stones rivers there. by my house so grew up with rivers some. and ponds by my house take my dog to rivers and ponds yeah so go and look at the stones now you can have informed. i have i used to collect yeah. them but you never know knew and what to look out for. I do get engaged in this. I debate this stuff all the time. What well, biogeology? Uh, no, like flood stuff. Yeah, I'm not talking you have about no, flood. You have absolutely no anatomical features. You can't. You just say that it's bubbly, so it must be organic. Even though organically, the tissues are actually much more smooth than that. Unless you're talking about on the outside like scales or something but you said it was an internal cavity so it's actually opposite of what you say and it's petrified so what kind of um and you don't petrify transmutation what kind of transmutation tissue. what happens to the when the elements go through transmutation they change so 
Things that were smooth will no longer be as smooth. Things that are fatty will crystallize and become transparent. So yeah, things change, but we can see enough evidence that correlates with the anatomy of an elephant in the mountain that we live next to, 50 correlations. And we can see that also goes with the historical accounts of Titans that the Bible, the Quran, and many other myths talk about, which you don't think is very strong evidence. But considering the that these are all evidence. different texts, you think so, but that's your no. opinion. No. It would only be bad. That. It would only be bad if it was proven wrong somewhere else. And so far, everything the Bible says about Earth being level, stationary, and contained. Wrong has not been proven wrong you've been told that that's wrong everything that we can experience and test been for told ourselves that it's right everything that we can test goes with what the bible says everything no, that isn't. you but believe this, this everything that you believe so. is what what you've been told and what you've seen on a television screen that says that the bible's wrong but what we can test oh. says that the bible's right what evidence we can find for a worldwide flood says that the bible's right you but just if you keep want saying to that, the, but you've provided no actual evidence. I've shown visual evidence of my own collection, part of my own collection, and part of Mike Wilkerson's collection. There's and some I also rocks showed photos of rocks for a worldwide flood. No. All of the heart-shaped stones that we find on both beaches, valleys, riverbeds, and even submerged in mud in the garden, they always have at least three to five features that exactly correlate with the anatomy of a heart taylor okay well you there's can more keep than ignoring three or four that. features in a heart so you yes need to we've counted up to 20 and we've counted your, up to 20 but on your, most um, rocks you'll find three to five and they're always in the right place the right orientation at the right scale but you can count that as just coincidence if you want taylor but yeah we call and, and it's it a stretch too. Evidence. It's, a, it's a major stretch um the other not thing really um yeah really Really, uh, no, believing in billions of years. Show me, show me where um, soft flesh can be petrified into a rock. Sure thing. Research on Google, Hiroramo, Hiroramo Segato. He is an old Italian, um, I think he was a museum owner, and he figured out how to petrify flesh. He had his own collection. And there was another Italian guy that did the same. Uh, so there's not very far in the history. When did he live? We, Hiramo Segato, you'd have to Google it. I can't remember if it was 1800s or 1900s. Also, so we, we have no verification petrified. of that. Okay. We can see petrified wood worldwide when we see trees that have been hit by electric lines or they've been submerged That's not in soft water. Tissue. We can see biological things like wood that have been petrified. Remember the moon rock that they gave to the Dutch um, queen? It turned out to be petrified wood. But that's another oh. debate too. So yeah, we know that wood can petrify. We know that Hiramo Sagato made flesh petrify, and I showed you how we can make rubies out of powder in a, a microwave with just 20 seconds. So there's lots of evidence of transmutation of elements. Even a chicken laying an egg every day when it doesn't eat that much calcium in its diet shows that the transmutation of elements is real. Um, we see. Uh, we see how sand can turn to glass with heat, and we see how um, per mineralization, things that are left with uh, minerals, in case of minerals, can change over time as well. So there's lots of evidence to support what we're looking into. The only difference is we're saying it was most likely a supernatural event that's very difficult to replicate with natural sciences, but there are natural sciences that suggest there was a supernatural event because it's worldwide in different environments. You would expect there, different no shapes in a riverbed. That you would expect you wouldn't expect to find the har shaped stones yes, you would. in riverbeds and oceans and valleys and submerged in mud. Yes, you would. There's Maybe in one location about that. We would expect flat to see top. Hot, we would expect to see rocks with some grooves in them. Like I said, Taylor. You only find two shapes, no, rounded, oval, or harp shapes. You just named three. Oval and rounded or harp shaped. So that's three shapes. 
But no, you, you find you can oval find geometric is ones rounded. That are, that have, so oval and uh, rounded we can understand from mechanical erosion narrative. Yes, that makes sense. The other shape, the only other shape that's wrong. reoccurring, the only nope. other reoccurring shape is half shaped. No, nope. there are rectangular they, shapes. Oh, there are odd shapes with hard edges. You're talking about normal broken pieces of rock. I'm talking about smooth stones, pebbles that you find on the beach and along the coastline and in riverbeds. Go and right. look at them. Now you know what to look out for. And because then let's see if you've got counter evidence instead of just unsupported claims. That would uh, be great. You have unsupported claims that these are organs just because they have a groove in them. Uh, um, multiple grooves, wow, multiple okay. dents, wow, multiple morphologies, a, an odd a reoccurring, reoccurring. And you know how they get smooth is by weathering on all sides. So the the smooth ones we would expect to be more oval and round shaped because guess what happens when you start smoothing something that is um, like rectangular shaped? Its edges disappear and it becomes more oval. That's a, that's precisely expected. There's nothing impressive or unique about this that would point to a flood. Actually, you're wrong, because when a pebble has been fractured, it will forever show that it's been fractured. It's always darker on the inside. And even after it's been smoothed with lots of water erosion and wind and mechanical erosion, and sun bleaching, it still never be as pale as the skin that surrounds the unfractured pebbles, because organs have a skin called fascia, especially the harp-shaped uh, stones. They have an even thicker skin. Uh, it's for, to protect your organs from abrasion, and um, that's what we're seeing on pebbles, that when the smooth stone has been broken or broken in half, it is darker inside, it's not as smooth. Even when it's been smoothed out, it'll always be darker. Are you, and these are you talking things, about real pebbles or organ real, pebbles? Real pebbles. All like that pebbles, are actually rocks that were always all rocks? Stone, smooth stones that you find in riverbeds and along coastlines. So then there's no difference between your heart-shaped stones and pebbles. A fracture. A smooth heart-shaped stone that's been fractured clearly shows it's darker inside. A oval, rounded, smooth stone that's been fractured shows that it's darker inside. These are facts. You can check them for yourself, and you might have a better explanation in a worldwide flood and that we're looking at all the civilizations and creatures that got caught up in the flood. I look forward to hearing that better explanation because wind, water, and mechanical erosion do not account for up to 20 reoccurring characteristics that we find on the harp-shaped stones and up to 50 correlations that we found on a mountain that's well above sea level. And even NASA has got on their own website that on the top of the Himalayan mountains, the sea um, marine or microorganisms, which say that the Mount Everest was underwater at one point. So there's evidence on the NASA website, coastline, riverbeds, historical accounts, scripture, uh, myth. There's historic accounts of a worldwide flood everywhere. And there's also uh, accounts uh, and testimonies that the Smithsonian Institute is covering up evidence of these bone discoveries being giants and things because they want us to believe that these things happened millions of years ago. But if dinosaurs were around for roughly 66 million years, 166 million years ago, something like that, we'd expect to find a lot more uh, carcasses and skeletons and fossilized uh, remnants of dinosaurs if they were really around for 66 million years. So all of their we're only, we've organs. only been here for a few hundred thousand years now, but the skeletons all of, their, of um, us under Paris, the skeletons up to the ceiling in all mm -hmm. these places and the capitals of the world, yet there's not that many skeletons of dinosaurs, even though they were here for... Um, yet, yet there's um, thousands upon thousands of their organs lying around everywhere. So their organs, organs of all more readily sorts. than their skeletons for some reason. Organs are in bags. Fascia, you said they're only like heart shaped. Oven bag. Or rounded, -shaped. rounded oval, which we would understand from rolling around, or heart shaped. Yeah, you do understand that all organs are not just. 
plain oval. It's like you know what a liver looks I like. I know. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so Sometimes to get down can... to an oval shape, it would have to either fracture or weather away at some of those hard edges. So you would be seeing the inside of it, which we do find some see. kidney kidney bean uh, pebbles, so that's a but, they're shape. Fa- but they're fairly rounded, aren't they? So they're not as easy to distinguish. And livers, yeah, so all of this is uh, also explainable fairly rounded by regular physical mechanical erosion. The oval ones, yes. Not the harp-shaped ones, though, are they? Why not? The harp-shaped ones, because they've even got chambers inside when you split them open. Like I said, you should look... That. Not all of them, but a lot of them have got chambers. Most where you'd expect chambers to be like in layers. the harp-shaped stones, you find chambers, you like... find uh, aorta holes, you find uh, veins and uh, um, fatty... Um, petrified uh, quartz, which looks like fat. There's you over mean it's 20... actually a chamber with no rock in it, or a cha- uh, something that is infilled with rock? A hollow chamber mm. inside big harp shapes. So why haven't you published? Few... Why haven't you published this in like some anatomy paper or anything? The peer-reviewed system is the government's best w- method. It's of not censorship. a government. It's not wow. government. Who are the government? Tyler? It's all private industry. Who and what is the government, Tyler? Isn't it a big court? Isn't the United many. States of America um, Taylor? Sorry, isn't the whole United States of America a big corporation? When you really look into things, yes, no. maritime law, maritime law, everything about your birth certificate. You're you've been sold at sea. The whole birth canal, the birth system, the docks, being doctors, the whole thing in our language shows that electricity banking and water have got a lot to do with each other and we don't understand the words that they use in the court system because they use black laws dictionary there's a lot of things we we when we say we understand somebody we stand under the authority so, so we're being brainwashed with mm-hmm. our own language we're being brainwashed with our own court system so if you think that governments aren't corporations if you don't think that money makes the world uh, go around, yeah, your fake globe, then you're in a complete delusion. The governments are all connected to the United Nations. They proved that with all the lockdowns that no one had a say in. Yeah, Worldwide, um, we're I under have... a world government, and Am these people control nearly, or... nearly. Our history, our space, our, going. our climate change, everything's controlled by the same organization. And I'm saying that they're behind the devil's work. It's not controlled by the same organization because they fight each other all the time. Um, I am anti-government. I'm a libertarian. I hate the government. Uh, but no, our, the entire scientific process is not owned by the government. Big Pharma owns part of the government. Um, there's and uh, The military-industrial complex owns the government. But that doesn't mean all anatomy scientists are owned by the government. I didn't say all scientists. I said that okay, then. Peer, the peer-reviewed so, system is the government's greatest tool of censorship. So how? they can make Let's talk certain... about that. I'll, how I'd is like this to... the government own peer review? And what was your alternative? Well, didn't you just review? say that just Big Pharma trust, owns the government? What someone says? Didn't you just say that Big Pharma own the government? So yeah. corporations, bankers, and industries that have got a lot of invested. Uh, what does big pharma have money to do with this? Interests. They can tr- they pull the strings of the puppets that we vote for and call politicians. They don't represent us. They represent the people that put them in the what power. What does that have? And to they're do all with members of secret public. societies. And these secret societies set up these peer-reviewed systems, set up the academic system, set up the military system. No, they didn't. That's why they've got. Yes, they did. That's they didn't why they've set got. Up the I was academic system. No. I w- That's a lie. Listen. No, it's not a lie. Yes, it it's is. It's all proven. The Rockefellers have taken over the whole academic have system. Have taken over and the whole... peer review. And the academic system. Where's the evidence the of that? Pharmacy. I can get it for another debate if you want, mate. Oh, interesting. It's all, it's all historically accounted how everything's oh, connected to the same bankers that have got their fingers in everything in the world. In and they're also in And they're also all connected to secret societies, one that I used to be a member of. And they're all pulling the strings to help create one big delusion, which it supports and fuels atheism. And it's all intertwined and interconnected to the same organization that I keep mentioning. The United Nations are 
behind everything. But you have no proof. You just keep saying it. I showed the proof in my opening statements. Their own websites show their affiliations. The United Nations admit that they are behind all of the space agencies. They admit they're behind climate change. And on the World Meteorological uh, Organization, they admit that they're modifying the weather in over 50 countries for over 50 years. So one organization is blaming us for climate change. The other organization's literally spraying chemicals and metals in the sky, not caring that the children, the animals and the plant You're life will get contaminated. It's on their own website. Anything. I can go on a, their own website and share my screen right now. The World Meteorological That's Organization, the world and therefore, United Nations Howard World Meteorological Website. Anatomy papers. This is just Sorry? an excuse. I'm showing that show they're connected says, to we history. We the weather. You asked me a question. Show me where it says we control the weather. Therefore, Howard cannot publish comparative anatomy papers. I'm showing and let's you. Let's see. Let's see the anatomy the of the audience. This. I'm showing the audience that they can go on Google. And see that the stuff I showed in my opening statement is true. They are in control of the narratives of who have symbology worshipping a snake, which you have in common with them. So it's no, interesting that you've it. got something in common. You've got an idea that you worship that we no, can I be don't, as gods. I don't worship anything. Um, but you, you've been I'd going like, for a while. But I just want to. Okay, so uh, so I'll jump in. You just Taylor, um, go ahead. Yeah, and I, need I think to we should jump into closings extra, after this. Yeah, Taylor, I need to be go able ahead. To have equal time. Um, so none of that shows why you can't publish a comparative anatomy paper. And I'd like to see the internal anatomy of your stones. Um, just because there's corruption doesn't mean it's all one world plan. Because uh, guess what? They fight each other. They don't agree. Sometimes they go to war with each other. Is Russia part of this plan? Yeah, there's all elusive, these questions you can't answer. That I can't. I can try. Uh, some are Luciferians, some are conjecture. Satanists. Some are, no, there all are conjecture. Satanist organizations. There are Luciferian, okay. outright spoken so members the of the United Nations. If you let me finish, uh, members they, aren't outright spoken Luciferian. Just like the big, um, the biggest, most famous <laughs> Freemasons are outspoken Luciferians. They don't uh, deny it. And the, they admit the it. people who own this country and control the country are outspoken Christians. No, they're not. Yes, they are. They, they really are. But this is another debate. You might be conjecturing that they're secret Satanists, but they are openly Christians. Okay, Maybe I'm going to jump I'll in. I'd agree guys. with you on that. I'd I'll agree with you on that. That I'm going to jump in. I, I think we've probably um, gone through the relevant points on the dinosaurs versus dragons uh, topic. Uh, to be um, fair, let's. If, if I could, I, I did want to see the anatomy of the heart stones, if we have time for that. I, yeah. we, we do have audience questions that I got to make sure I have this wrapped up in the next 25 minutes. We have gone over on uh, time. Can so I just answer you... it fastly? It's if anyone's interested, they can't just get it in verb uh, in verbal words from me. They can see the evidence on my channel or on my friend Mike Wilkerson's channel, Stallium Seven. He's gone very in depth uh, on this research. He's uh, a chiropractor, so he's studied anatomy, histology, and uh, other things uh, to do with uh, biology. So he's gone more and more much more in depth into this research i'm just promoting his research because i've got involved and i found my own evidence to justify my um belief that that i'm not sure if earth is young but at least humanity is young and the bible is a lot more true than what we've been taught to believe thank you danny okay gentlemen thank you very much since we did bonus minutes and we do have audience questions. I think we should just jump into the audience questions and then we'll have some quick final words and final thoughts at the end of the audience questions. And, and that'll give you both the opportunity if you wanted to um, address a couple last things. Okay, so let's, um, all right, let's start at the beginning then. Praise the I am, question for Taylor. Taylor and praise. I've had a few epic showdowns in their time. So he is asking, do you actually believe T-Rex de-evolved into chickens? Isn't that the opposite of progressive evolution? 
Nope, I do not believe that they de-evolved into chickens. And to unpack that, obviously, that's not a thing that happens. There's no such thing as de-evolution. Um, this comes with a lot of assumptions that um, a T-Rex is just a better animal, just because it's, I'll admit, it's a cooler animal. I'd definitely rather ride a T-Rex than a chicken. Um, I'd definitely I'd rather have a T-Rex in a fight than a chicken. But uh, that doesn't say anything about whether or not um, T-Rex and chickens are better at surviving and in what conditions. And so <laughs> it's just... This is assuming that evolution is just a, um, a game of mortal combat where the biggest, most ferocious animals are somehow more evolved, but that's not how evolution works. You uh, might be better off being smaller and less of a fighter. That's how evolution is actually progressive. So um, the conditions that killed off the dinosaurs, um, some of the dinosaurs, the smaller more feathered dinosaurs were able to survive that. So that was progressive evolution. And those animals continued to be able to, um, continued on to evolve to be able to fly. So that's progressive evolution. And chickens do, uh, like jungle fowl, that's what, where we got chickens from. They do fine in the wild. So that's not de-evolution, that's not degeneration. It doesn't matter, as long as you can survive Whatever changes exist through the population, that's evolution. All right. Thank you, Snake. Um, Howard, anything you'd like to add to that or respond to? Yeah, I'd just like to hold uh, Taylor to the same burden of proof. When he was asking about where all the horns or the wings for these bone discoveries, and I pointed out the Draco X does have horns, um, do you have any bone discoveries that show um, scales turn into feathers? Or is this just conjecture from your side? Scales turning into feathers? How do you mean? Like Where's your evidence? Where's your evidence that the T-Rex turned into a chicken? I mean, it's, it's absurd just to say it, but where is your evidence that scales... No one. That, that's the other thing. No one believes T. Rex turned into chickens. There were smaller theropods that turned that uh, turned into birds. That evolved. Where's your birds. evidence? Where's and, um, your evidence in your bone discoveries? An entirely different debate. But real quickly, um, the evidence is in the fact that theropods already had feathers on them. Uh, there's evidence that, uh, well. It's not evidence. It's, it's been demonstrated that feathers and scales grow from the same original uh, stem cells, um, the same anatomy. They are chemically identical. The only difference is in um, what parts of the um, keratin are pro uh, producing cells are programmed to die off. Um, in crocodiles, they've been able to make their scales turn into proto feathers. In chickens, they've been able to convert their foot scales directly into feathers. Um, and they've mapped out the entire developmental process of that. The fossil evidence is in a smooth transition of theropods getting more and more robust feathers and more and more robust uh, flapping arms that become more and more like birds, and they are obviously um, sequenced in the right manner and dated in the right manner that we would expect as well. If you wanted a quick response, Howard, and then we'll throw it back to Taylor for a quick final word, then we'll move on to the next question. I just, uh, I'd appreciate a little bit of honesty because a lot of the stuff you're saying is down to assumptions. You're assuming that the ones that had bigger arms that you think were transitioning to wings, they could have just been a different breed, a different uh, type of uh, the animal. From a different part of the world that's gone extinct you can't prove that you, you haven't actually got any transitional fossils have you you haven't got anything that you can prove was in transition you've just got different types of uh, creatures with different sized arms 
And like you said, we can genetically modify stem cells to do one thing or another with our intelligent design, but we haven't got any evidence of this happening naturally, have we? Um, ahead, yeah, we do power. actually. Um, so you said there are no transitional fossils. That doesn't make sense. Um, what would be a transitional fossil? I mean, let's let's have a whole debate about this because this is a lot to unpack in a quick comment. Um, but a transitional fossil is just a fossil that has features that of two different animals. So there are transitional fossils. There are theropods and there are birds. And birds are a type of theropod, but um, there are theropods without feathers. There are theropods with feathers. There are small theropods with big feathers. There are small theropods with even bigger feathers. There are small theropods with um, better uh, musculature and bones for those muscles that better for flapping and so you get these small tiny shifts and they're all in order so that's what we mean by transitional fossils um and it's not genetic manipulation it's literally putting an acid onto i think it's an acid um retinoic acid if i remember uh onto the scales and they start forming feathers and um uh we know how the genes work, but it's not genetic manipulation that makes scales turn into feathers. Um, the um, assumptions that these are... Um, let's compare your um, speculation and assumptions about dragons having um, fire lighting technology in their mouths um, to the evolutionary assumptions so-called so you assume that because you can light um, flatulence on fire that therefore dragons have that in their mouths um where as there's no examples of that anatomy existing anywhere in the animal kingdom meanwhile for evolutionary biology that is actually rigorous and scientific um, it makes predictions we predicted that these biologies would exist then they were found um, we predicted the order that they should be found in it was found in that order. And that anatomy already exists in animals. We know what animals that fly, they have a more robust furcula and uh, wishbone to hold muscles. So when we find that an same anatomy, we can safely make that comparison of, oh, that's probably for the same function. Meanwhile, you don't have anything that can light fires in any creature's mouth ever. There's no evidence for it. It's just pure speculation <clears throat> on your part. Okay, to be fair, what I'll do here is, Howard, you get up to a minute to respond to anything Taylor said, and then, Taylor, you get one minute for a final word, then we'll move on <laughs> to the next question. Howard, go ahead, starting now. Thanks. It's, it's just, when you say speculation, I haven't just come up with this idea that dragons have fire coming out of their mouths. I'm reading scripture. I'm seeing depictions where they have made accounts of dragons breathing fire. We know that, uh, is it squids can squirt ink? We, we see lots of things throughout nature, like skunks can squirt a smell, no? So there's lots of things throughout nature where we see things have got a way to d attack or defend themselves. So I don't think it's that preposterous to think that dragons could breathe fire when we know that we have gases coming out of us that are flammable. And we know that oxygen and hydrogen are flammable at the right um, densities or the right cons um, metabolism. I can't think of the right word. So, yes, if our saliva is acidic and I don't see what's so far fetched about a, another second. creature having saliva that's even flammable. OK, it's thank you. Far thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, Taylor, you get one minute and then we'll move on. Um, it's far-fetched because there's no evidence that that's possible just because <laughs> there's um, a little bit of methane in flatulence doesn't mean there's fire breathing. So reading a story is not evidence that that story actually happened. You've given zero way to tell a di the difference between a fantastical story that's made up or a mistake or just became mythology that people thought was real but wasn't real. You have no way to tell the difference between that and a real fantastical or a real monster that can do these things. So your only evidence, again, is in stories, which you've admitted can be false. Um, I would want to propose us debate the particular topic of bird evolution 
because this is actually one of my favorite topics. I want to debate someone on it. Seems like you want to debate this too. And it's a huge topic. So, <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Up. Okay. Thank you, Taylor and Howard. What we'll do is power rounds now on the next few questions. One minute each to respond. So say the questions for Taylor. You get a minute. Howard gets a minute. And then uh, Taylor, we get the last minute. So here we go. Next question. This one is for Howard. Creation's crybaby. Howard. Folklore doesn't require a historic underpinning. Haven't leprechauns, the Loch Ness Monster, Genie, and others long survived in folklore without any bodies to examine? Go ahead. So what's he actually, is he making a statement or a question here? I think he's asking if... Um, haven't leprechauns, Loch Ness Monster, genies survived in folklore without any bodies to examine? And in so, other words, why is there no bone discoveries for these things? Could be. Yeah, okay. Well, that's that was my point. The very first bone discovery claimed to be a dinosaur was discovered, reburied, and then rediscovered. This is a known fact. So obviously somebody had to check it and verify if there was things that needed to be hidden or not so i imagine there's been lots of bone discoveries that the smithsonian institute has been uh, culpable of destroying so that there is no evidence of the horns the wings the fire breathing because they go against the narrative that we're being told to believe appreciated howard taylor floor is yours yeah, so um, private citizens can go out, including paleontologists who are private citizens, they're not government agents, um, can go out and just look for bones. And they do it all the time. And in this day and age, it's easier than ever. And you could just publish it into the media immediately. And where, so it's impossible to cover up. So where are all of these fossils for cryptids or examples it's interesting that no one can find them even when they're looking for it but we have evidence of dinosaurs okay appreciate it taylor howard you get the last word go ahead just that there is evidence and uh, you don't see it on mainstream media but you can find evidence and a lot of the time it's even gone through court systems so it's official, but yeah, it's just not promoted as um, the mainstream narrative. So you've got to dig a little bit deeper if you're really interested and make your own observations, like I keep telling people with biogeology. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Howard. Next question comes in from Dr. Dino. Question for Howard. He says, I am a paleontologist who has found actual dinosaur bones in the field. They would not resemble anything like mythical dragons. Dracorex is just a pachycephalosaurid too. More of a comment, as a matter of fact, but feel free to uh, respond to it however you'd like to, Howard. Yeah, cool. It's, um, you know, we've been given these big names and these big timelines and um, the bones that suit the narrative we, we get to see or they get to make a, you know new casts of and the ones that go against the narrative get destroyed um draco rex is a great example because it has the horns um which supports my um interpretation more than it supports taylor's okay thank you howard taylor yeah go ahead so because it has horns, that means that supports the existence of dragons. Um, I, I think there's a problem here with um, you You count, what is this, the Texas sharpshooter fallacy, where you count all the hits, but you ignore all the misses. So there are tons and tons of features that you're ignoring here. What were you talking about earlier where, um, can't, I can't recall at this time, but um, just just ignoring all the the data points that don't go along with you and only 
paying attention to the data points that do. So where are the wings on the Draco Rex? And it's it's not a it's not some long confusing name. It's it's a label that accurately describes what these creatures their their anatomy. The Pachycephalosaurids have uh, um, a rounded, thick skull for fighting each other. Um, at least that's the thought, um, because of similar anatomy and like billy goats and things like that. But um, these animals were herbivores based on their teeth. They don't have um, dragon teeth. They have short forelimbs, so they're two-legged. They don't, No one has discovered them with wings, at least that we know of. But again, we can't just assume that it is that they did have wings just because, well, it's, I mean, it's possible someone lied about it. So these are herbivores, not dragons. These are, they, they look nothing like actual dragons other than they have horns. Have I got 30 seconds just to make a quick comeback? Yeah, you get the last word. Go ahead, Howard. Thanks. Okay, so when you say ignore the hits, no, I don't. It's just that what, what I count as good points for me demolish your worldview what you count as evidence for you doesn't demolish my worldview you're saying that some of the skeletons have got hips like chickens yeah hips don't lie i get that that's cool i'm not against that there was big chickens mate i'm saying that there was a lot of big creatures so some of the bone discoveries will have hips that look like chicken because maybe there was big chicken like creatures just like we see hammerhead sharks and different types of sharks that look completely different than other sharks yeah well there's supposedly dragons that were walking on land dragons that were flying and dragons that were s swimming so there's different types of dragons so obviously there'd be many different types of skeletons just in that one creature but like i said you can have your big chickens i just don't believe they came from uh, lizards originally Okay, thank you, Howard. Next question comes in. Bubblegum Gun, $2 Super Chat. Question for Howard. Howard, the flood is in the Quran. Does that mean that the Quran is true? It's a good question. There's things in the Quran that are definitely uh, contradictory, like the whole idea of having free will and then being able to marry a six-year-old and even under. So the Quran as a whole, I definitely don't believe is true. But I do believe that the best lies are 99% true. So there's lots of truth in the Quran. Um, truth that we can verify with natural sciences, like the flood, like the earth being level, contained and stationary, and uh, like there being a higher dimension with higher dimensional beings that like they depict the angels and the devils on our shoulders. There's more to this world than we realize. and that part of these uh, part of this deception is not wanting us to know that there's higher dimensions so that we think that all of our decisions are from our own we don't want, we don't like the idea that our thoughts are, are not our own okay thank you howard taylor floor is yours well it's a good question and i um, appreciate you saying that there are moral problems in the quran but i would push back and say that um for very similar reasons, um, I wouldn't believe the Bible either because, the, of course, the Bible promotes slavery and genocide and all kinds of horrible things for women. And so on that same route, I would say, even if we grant the flood, that still doesn't uh, prove the Bible true because we can still reject it on those moral grounds. And maybe the, uh, the Sumerian myths are actually true. If okay, thank you. Just to, hey, yeah, you get the just final to, word. Go ahead. Just to say quickly, this isn't my debate. I don't know enough about this, but I have heard people explain that slavery in the Bible is only talking about times of war, and nope. that rather than kill a woman, uh, it's better to take her as a slave and, and look after her. Uh, that's one of the latest debates I heard, that slavery in the Bible is not uh, anything apart from times of war. And that when God told, um, I think it was David, to go and kill all women, children, and animals in the city, it was because they were hybrid. They were from the fallen angels. They were not human anymore. They were ch Chimea, or however you pronounce it, 
They were not God's creation. So they were abominations. They were evil by design. So they would corrupt God's world. So God knew that they had to be wiped off the face of the earth. So there are explanations for why he would tell people to kill women and children because they were not his design. Okay, next question is for Taylor. So Taylor, you can have the last word on this one to be fair. So echoing erudite question for Snake. Doesn't depictions and descriptions of several large reptile creatures worldwide from different cultures and times with multiple accounts mean something unique was seen? Doesn't depictions and descriptions of several sun gods from all over different cultures and times with multiple accounts mean that something was really seen? No, it doesn't. It means that people saw the sun and they didn't have science. And so they thought that everything was mystical. Um, and they also saw large reptiles. There are large reptiles all around the world and people do have... Um, very vivid imagination. So if you see half a crocodile coming out of the waters and you run away from it, you might say it's it, instead of 15 feet long, you might say it's 50 feet long. Um, and you might say that its spikes were all that it reached five feet long and things like that. People exaggerate, people tell stories. Maybe you came back and told an accurate account to your village and then your brother went to the next door village and said it was 70 feet long. And so things get distorted, um, but it's not a stretch that people exaggerated the things they saw around them. They thought the sun had magical powers. Well, that's based on them seeing a sun. They thought large reptiles. I mean, the people back then thought everything was magical. Magical thinking was a thing. Some, some people still do think everything's magical, but... Uh, that's a thing that I've been focusing on a lot of the studies of ancient cultures is they, they weren't walking around thinking kind of like we do. They thought there was magical significance to everything. And so that might distort how you talk about things that actually do exist. And so it's not suspicious at all that there are repeated themes across the world where they're exaggerating a lot of the same things that do exist in reality. Okay, thank you. Uh, Snake, Howard, floor is yours. I'd just like to say there's a difference between impossible and highly improbable. It's not impossible that people in different parts of the world would all depict the sun and the moon and the other planets, which we call fallen angel, um, wandering stars fallen angels it's not impossible that all of these different cultures at different times throughout history all personified these uh, celestial beings but it's very improbable it's very very improbable that so many people would depict the sun being a, a being of some type that has a consciousness that has an effect that could manifest in the flesh in maybe different times in our history as a demigod. It's very improbable that so many people would depict these same things having the same characteristics like we see with the Statue of Liberty, Helios, and many other statues that have all got the sun rays coming out. Very, very improbable that they would all have the same depictions. But yeah. It's not impossible. I'll give you that. Okay. Thank you, Howard and Taylor. You get the last minute to respond. Go ahead. Well, it's, it's not that it's uh, not just, it's, it's not just plausible, but it's factual that these people um, told stories and exaggerated things, things. Cause we know the sun is not a demigod. And um, I'm not sure how that fits into your theology where it seems like you believe in a single creator God, but, um, we know the sun is not conscious or a demigod. So yes, it is a fact that these people exaggerated and assigned traits to the sun that weren't there. And they all did it apparently independently, although there were cultures that lived next to each other, shared ideas. Um, but this is kind of a problem I noticed in the debate as a whole is you kind of take, um, 
take things in the opposite direction too, where you say something is pos possible, therefore it's actually probable, therefore it actually, yes, it did happen, in fact, with quite great certainty. So there doesn't seem to be a very good standard of what actually is good evidence and what is not good evidence and, and what and where on that scale we should place individual evidence, whereas it seems like the tiniest amount of evidence and conjecture becomes full-blown. This is almost certainly what happened because, you know, if if certain people report voices, well, therefore it actually is actually um, inter interdimensional beings. Um, so I, it seems like there's leaps in logic going around um, that people report similar things in mythology. Therefore, it actually is real, even though and we can second. check. The sun's not a demigod. Mm -hmm. There are no dragons wandering around. There are no unicorns wandering around. So we have to okay. apportion our confidence that way. Okay, thank you, Snake, for the final word. That was your question. So we'll give you, again, the final word. Okay, gentlemen, that wraps up the audience Q&A as we have uh, run out of time here. But I do want to give you both the opportunity for some uh, quick, let's say up to a minute, final words, final thoughts, fun debate, definitely an interesting topic, dinosaurs versus dragons. And so I do appreciate the time, uh, Howard and Taylor, that you've given to us uh, to debate this, this topic. So Taylor, why don't we start with you? Quick final words, final thoughts. And again, thanks for doing this. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I don't know what any, assuming any of these conspiracies are even remotely plausible, um, based on the scant evidence, if any, what does that have to do with anything? If, if people thought that dragons weren't real, therefore atheism, I, I don't understand. There's a lot better ways to spread atheism than that. And that's, and people don't point to, there are no dragons, so you shouldn't believe in God. That's not what atheists argue <laughs> along at all. Um, and so we need evidence for these conspiracies. We don't have any evidence. Um, we have some evidence for some conspiracies, but then you, again, this is the problem is you take an inch and go a mile. So the fact that there are some conspiracies and I'll grant that there are conspiracies in big pharma. Therefore the entire world is in on this interdimensional conspiracy. It doesn't follow. So your only evidence, I asked you multiple times, how do you tell the difference between stories and actual cryptids that really existed? Your answers were scripture, which is just circular. How do you tell the scripture is art or mistakes or or whether it's real? Um, and the only other answer was, well, they wanted to be taken seriously. So why would they lie, basically? Well, they might not have been lying. They might just be mistaken. And again, we're back to the original problem. People mistook things all the time. They mistook manatees for mermaids. Um, so how, again, how do we tell the difference? Howard has no way other than conjecture. So we're left only with the evidence that we actually have, which is the dinosaurs. Okay, Taylor, thank you for the final words and final thoughts. And again, thank you for participating in this debate. Howard, over to you. Thank you as well for uh, doing this debate. It was your first time here. And so I appreciate you being willing to uh, jump into the debate octagon on, on this topic. So Howard, we'll hand it to you. Final words, final thoughts. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Donny. And uh, thank you, Taylor, for taking the debate topic seriously it's uh, not everybody's cup of tea it's pretty out there compared to what we've been told to believe but i'd just like to use this last moment to address what you've just said about circular reasoning i'm totally against that because i'm taking different pieces of evidence from different locations and different times and I'm making an accumulation, I'm joining dots, and I'm seeing the evidence in scripture and saying this evidence in scripture matches the artifacts, it matches the myths, and it matches the things we can find with our own fingers. 
So I would say that yours is more circular reasoning because you only have one source, the academic system and the museum uh, beliefs. Now, you speak as if everything that you uh, have learned is definite when you say that we know that the sun isn't a demigod. When you say that we know these things, you're speaking with such authority, it shows me that you're very close-minded, where in, in comparison, I'm not speaking like I know what shape the earth is, or I know what these bone discoveries were. I'm saying that I'm investigating things that support skepticism and support investigation. I'm recommending that you and everyone else that's interested in knowing if there was a worldwide flood does a bit of investigation into biogeology, looking at smooth stones and rock formations in general. Uh, and then they can, thank you, and then they'll have evidence to weigh what they want to believe. And just to answer one last time, why do dragons matter, a conspiracy about dragons? Because the devil is known to be a dragon in the Bible, in the Garden of Eden as a serpent, and in all of the other cultures, the devil is very known as being related to dragons, serpents, lizards. So it's it's a lot of reasons why dragons would be concealed. But there's the biggest one, the devil himself. Thank you so much. Okay, Howard and Taylor, thank you for the final words, final thoughts. Again, thank you for giving us your time for this debate. And to the audience, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate the engagement, the super stickers and support, and also all of the uh, relevant questions that have come in. And so with that, uh, we are going to wrap things up. And again, thank you for tuning in. Standing for Truth is out.